So today we're going to be looking at how we can make custom indicators in Backtrader with Python. So the example that I'm going to be walking through in this video is the indicator that I've got here. And essentially what this does is it looks at these three simple moving averages here. So we've got the 30 day, the 100 day and the 200 day. And it basically gives them a score depending on how high the 30 day is relative to the 100 and 200 day. So if the 30 day is above the 100 day, that gives it one point. If it's above the 200 day, that gives it another point. And then we adjust it downwards by 1.5 to ensure that it's only a positive number when both of these conditions are triggered. We'll see more of that in a second, but you get the idea and you can see it plotted here. Now, of course, you're not limited to doing this with simple moving averages. You can mess around with the RSI and the MACD and you can make combinations of your own custom indicators. There's a real large amount of things you can do with this. And in this tutorial, we're only really going to scratch the surface. But let's dig into the code and actually start building this thing. So the first thing that you're going to want to do here is, well, you're going to want to get yourself a virtual environment here. And in there, you're going to want to install Backtrader 2 on GitHub here. I'll provide a link in the description. And it has some install instructions down here. So once you've got your virtual environment, you can call this pip install and then this git link. You will want this as opposed to regular Backtrader because the original version of Backtrader hasn't been maintained in a long time and there are some bugs that are starting to creep in there. So people have forked off and create Backtrader 2. So that's a bit more well maintained. So go ahead and install this in your virtual environment just so as to not conflict with any other versions of Backtrader you've got installed. You're going to want to install matplotlib as well and the requests module. That's basically all you need. And then go ahead and just create a Python file here. So I'm going to cheat in this video and I'm just going to copy their example here. I'd recommend that you do the same. It makes life a lot easier if you've got some sort of sample to start with. Otherwise, you always forget some of these slight nuances with syntax here or exactly how to get the Yahoo Finance data feed. So once you've got this in, it's a good time to test that your setup's actually working. So you're going to want to head and run that and just check everything's working, check we can get the data that is signaling, that is sending buys and sells, and overall that Backtrader is actually running. So here we are. We can see that the strategy down here seems to be working very well. So we can close out of that and actually get started on our own custom indicator. To do that, all we have to do is we have to define a new class over here, and it's going to be called over under indicator and it inherits from bt.indicator because it's an indicator and the first thing we have to define is the lines that are within the indicator so you saw on that previous chart there or the one i showed at the beginning there was that line at the bottom at the bottom of the screen that's the line which we're defining and it's the the indicator itself which can be used to compare values against for buy or sell signals so you can just give that a name. I'm going to call mine over under. You can call yours whatever you want. And it requires one line in each indicator, but you can have more than one indicator or rather more than one line in each indicator. If you so desire, you can have another one here, which is the inverse of the first one or a transform or anything you like really. But the main thing is you have to have at least one defined. So the next thing we'll do is we'll define the init here. And for our purposes, all of the calculations of the indicator are going to take place within this initialization here. But if you had some fancy logic, which depends on taking like trailing values or comparing values with their previous ones, you'd have to bring in the next function, which you might have seen in some of my other tutorials. But in this one, we're just going to be sticking to defining everything in, in it. So let's go ahead and define some simple moving averages. So we're just going to essentially copy this bit here. So we're going to say SMA1 is equal to bt.end.sma. And then let's say period is equal to 30. 
I'm gonna copy and paste this a few times and then we'll have SMA2 and SMA3 here with their respective time periods. So we've got that. The final thing we need to do is to actually define what value this line is gonna take on. I believe if we were to try and plot this right now, it would just give us zero or maybe undefined. So we have to actually set those values within the indicator itself. So to do that, we just say self dot over self dot L for lines, self dot L dot over under. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take self, it's gonna take this object here. It's gonna grab the line over under and now we're free to say what the value of that line is gonna be. If we wanted to, we could just say five and it would set it to five, but we're gonna use this function called bt.cmp and we're gonna pass in the two simple moving averages for now. We'll extend this a bit later on. And just to get an idea of what's happening here and to make sure it's actually plotting properly and that things are being calculated, you can just create an object here from that class. So we can just create an instance of that class. So if I do over under indicator and that'll just get picked up by Cerebro here and it will be added to the chart. So watch what happens when we run this. There we go. You can see our over under indicator here. Don't pay attention to these SMAs because these aren't the right ones, but it seems to be actually working and that when things shoot up very quickly, it goes to one, which indicates the shorter time frame is overtaking the longer one. So that looks good to me for now. And what we can do is we can just add on the other one here. So we'll say add pt.cmp, SMA1 and SMA3. And so that's actually it, to be honest, we've created a custom indicator which we're now using in here. The final thing that we really have to do is to plug this into our signaling. And so you see here, we've got self.signal.add. So it's gonna send a long signal whenever crossover here, so this crossover value is more than one, and when it's more than zero rather, and when it's less than zero, it will send a short signal. So we don't wanna use crossover, we wanna use our own custom indicator here. So I'm just gonna paste in over under indicator here, and I'm gonna set that to be called um, ind maybe, and then I'm just gonna pass in ind in here. So what will happen here is we'll see long and short being called, and it should be making some trades based on these moving averages. So there we go, we can see that it does seem to be working. Obviously, we haven't got much data here, so it's taking these 200 days to calculate it, and so it only starts calculating the value here. But what happens is when our over under indicator is over one or over zero, it sends a long signal, so it initiates the trade, and when it goes less than zero, it indicates a short, so it closes out our long position over here. So that's great, that seems to be working. Let's go grab some more data here just so that we can see the effects more clearly. So to do that, all you have to do is edit this Yahoo Finance section here. I'm gonna change the stock, I'm gonna change it to Tesla because that's a bit more interesting on the chart. And I'm gonna change the time here to 2019 or 2018, doesn't really matter. And let's run this again so we can get a clearer idea of how this indicator is running. There we are, we can see it's making a lot more trades now. So one thing that we might want to do just to confirm that things are acting properly and not being really weird is to actually plot on this graph the values of the simple moving averages. It's often nice to look at them in the same as the price chart here. So to do that, you can do it in a few different ways. You could, you could set these to be attributes of this class and then access them through here. But all I'm gonna do, because it's the easy option, is just to recalculate them in here. And Backtrader will automatically pick them up. So if I run this, it will display all of the parameters. There we go, we can see all of our SMAs here. And we can see they're all nicely colored and for example, 
when the 30 day here goes above each of these, we can see increasing by one each time. One final adjustment to this indicator that I'm gonna make is I'm gonna take 1.5 from this value just to make sure that it only triggers a long signal when this SMA is above both of these. So as it currently stands, if it's above one of them and not the other, we get a value of zero, which technically shouldn't fire off any long or close signals, but I prefer things to be a bit more clear. So I'm just gonna take 1.5 off of that. And while we're here, I'm just gonna add in a sizer down here. So you might have noticed on the top of that chart that we had up there, that it was only taking very small positions in the stocks. And that's because we hadn't added a sizer in. I think by default, it just uses one share of the stock. So obviously that's not gonna be a very large position, especially if we have say $10,000 in cash, which I believe is what the default starting value is for Cerebro here. So we'll do Cerebro.add sizer. So a sizer is just gonna calculate the position size that we actually want. You can make your own custom sizer to say, make bigger bets on Mondays than on Fridays, for example, but we're not gonna get into that here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use bt.sizers.percentsizer and we're gonna set the value of a percent to 95. You wanna be careful at using 100% here because oftentimes the orders will get rejected if you don't have enough money in the account. So I tend to use 95% as a relatively safe value. You could go up to maybe 98, 99, but I find 95 works quite well. So running this, we should have everything that we need. So that's it, that's our custom strategy here, plotted out with the trades properly entered and exited. And we even seem to have made some money with this strategy.